In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing a pen that I am so excited about. I'm gonna be reviewing the Pentel Brush Sign Pen Twin Tip. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Millie, the owner of Blink Lettering, a calligrapher and graphic designer. And today I'm bringing you a really exciting review video. If you have been following me for a while, then you will know that my favorite brush pen of all time is the Pentel Brush Sign Pen. It was the first brush pen I ever bought and from there I fell in love. It's a perfect pen for beginners and I just use it all the time. It's such a good pen. And the other day I discovered something really exciting. Pentel have bought out a brand new brush sign pen, which is a twin tip. And I've got them here. So this is what I'm reviewing in this video. And I just couldn't wait to get my hands on these. I'll of course, leave links in the description so you know where to buy them. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through what the packaging's like, what they're like for calligraphy, a color swatch, of course, and how well they blend together too. So let's dive into this review video. I can't wait. Let's just have a chat about the packaging. So on the front it says brush times brush, one's large, one's small. We've got new beginnings and then brush sign pen twin, which I'm so excited for. I personally went for the 30 color set, which is all of the colors. You can get these in smaller sets and you can also buy them individually as well. I'll be sure to leave links in the description below so you know exactly where to get them from. On the back, we have the list of all the colors. We've got color code and a color name. I'll be doing a swatch test later in this video. So when I do that, I'll be sure to use both. So if you want to buy individual colors, then you know exactly which ones they are. In terms of the actual packaging, the plastic just feels a little bit flimsy. I, I personally won't store them in this packet. I'll be storing them in my acrylic drawers. However, you could keep them in this packaging. It might get a little bit worn after a while, but it's not paper or cardboard, so it's not gonna get damaged too easily. Okay, let's have a look at the actual pens. I haven't even opened this yet, so I'm really excited to see what they're like. So one thing I do like is how the pens are staggered. So if you were to keep them in this packaging to store, then you can easily see all the different colors. So I do really like that. Okay, we're going for this color because it looks like my kind of color. So as you can see, it says Pentel Brush Sign Pen on the pen. And I really like that they have the thicker brush stroke and the thinner brush stroke on each end, just so it's really clear which one is thin and which one is thick. We also have the color on this end of the nib, which again, I really like. It means that you can clearly see what color it is on the actual tip, but also around this bit here. The only downside is this end doesn't have any color. So if you are storing them flat, you just need to make sure that you can see this end really clearly. So firstly, let's have a look at the fine end. So as you can see at the fine end, it looks really small and it actually doesn't look flexible. It almost looks like a felt tip end. And I'm pretty sure that is smaller than the standard Pentel brush sign pen. So I've just got a standard Pentel brush sign pen in the pinky purple. And you can see the nibs are quite different. The standard one, the nib is a little bit sharper and pointier at the end, and it seems a tiny bit bigger. Whereas the twin one, looks a bit more rounded and from here it just doesn't look like it'd be flexible but it says it is so we'll find that out when we do the calligraphy test and then at the other end we have the thicker nib this doesn't look quite as big as a tombow abt dual brush pen in fact it looks quite similar to an eco line brush pen so in the middle you can see we have a royal towns eco line brush pen and then at the top, it is a Tombow ABT dual brush pen. You can see that this nib is much more similar to the Royal Thailand Eco line brush pen. It'll be interesting to see how flexible it is compared to them as well. I personally prefer smaller nibs and I actually really like the size of the Eco line brush pen. So I'm really excited to try out this Pentel Twin brush nib. So the first thing we're going to test is of course the calligraphy test. It's the most important thing when it comes to testing out a brush pen to see how well it works when doing calligraphy strokes. For this, I'm gonna be using my trusty Rhodia dot pad. We're gonna start off with the smaller tip because this is much more similar to the standard Pentel brush sign pen and I really want to see how this writes. Firstly, it feels really nice to hold. 
So let's start off just doing a couple of different strokes. Ooh, so that felt quite stiff, so it's not flexing at all when I'm going up, and that makes it so easy to do thin upstrokes. Like I'm hardly putting any pressure on that, but there's so much control. Okay, let's see what the, ooh, that was a lot thicker than I expected. I'd say it's quite similar to a Tombow Fudenosuke hard tip, but it's a lot thicker than I expected it to be. So if we just compare it to the Pentel brush sign pen. So because the tip of this brush pen is a little bit more flexible, it's harder to do the really consistent straight up lines. But you can see that my down strokes can be a lot thicker. Just because the nib is a little bit bigger, there is more surface area to create those thick lines. But I actually really like the fact that this is different to the standard brush sign pen because it means that actually there's three different types of pen top sign pens we now have. We've got a harder tip, a softer tip, and then a larger tip. Okay, let's see how it writes. Just doing hello. Okay, this feels so nice. It feels so easy to control and really easy to transition from thin to thick. I'm just gonna use a slightly darker color so you can see it a little bit easier. I will be doing a full swatch test in this video. So if you want to see what all the colors are like, then do carry on watching. That feels really nice. The nib just feels like it bounces back so easily. I'm always recommending the Pentel brush sign pens to my students because they're so easy for beginners. And this feels even easier. Like, I don't think I could find a pen that I love more than the Pentel brush sign pen. So in terms of how it's writing, it's really smooth. It's so easy to go from thick to thin. And obviously being a much smaller nib means that I can easily do smaller letters. But I love the fact that it's still quite thick, even though the nib is quite stiff. I can't see too much overlap on the ink. There's a tiny bit of overlap on this H to the E. And I think that's just because it's a bit more of a pastel colour. On this Hello here, the ink kind of went a little bit weird, but I think it might have just been warming up because it's not really done that on this minimum. I think it was just because it was the first stroke I'd done with that pen. So, so far, I'm loving this. Okay, let's test out the thicker end. Okay, let's do a couple of upstrokes. Okay, so the nib feels a little bit softer, which is expected because it is a bigger nib, but it doesn't feel like it's flexing too much. Okay, now let's do some thick, ooh, that's nice and juicy. Okay, so that is really thick. The ink looks like it's drying pretty quickly, so it'll be intriguing to see how well this blends. We are gonna be doing a blend test later. Before we see how well that writes in general, let's just compare it to the Ecoline and Tombow. So this is the Ecoline. You can see that this nib is quite soft, so it's quite hard to do really thin upstrokes, but it does mean that I can do really thick downstrokes. So although the nibs are similar in size, the Pentel isn't as flexible. You can, of course, do thinner, thick strokes. With the Ecoline, you just don't put as much pressure on. And now with the Tombow, this nib is bigger and it is a little bit more flexible. It does tend to fray quite easily as well. So actually, although the nib is bigger, it's creating very similar thickness in the downstrokes because the Tombow only really flexes right at the tip. Again, I could do thinner 
downstrokes if I don't put as much pressure on. So although it's a similar size nib to the Ecoline, I'd say that it probably writes more similar to the Tombow ABT dual brush pen. Okay, let's see how it writes hello. Okay, so that feels really nice to transition between the two. Yeah, that feels good. So it's really smooth over the paper. And transitioning between the thick and thin lines is so easy because it's a relatively stiff brush pen. Although it's much bigger than the thinner tip, it's still very easy to control. I would actually suggest this is a good nib for beginners to start testing out slightly bigger tips, basically. It feels like it won't fray that easily either. Okay, so, so far I'm really happy with how these pens are working. I'm really excited that the fine tip feels different to the standard Pentel brush sign pen. They so could have easily just put that nib in and then created a bigger nib on the other end, but they've actually created two completely different nibs, but both of them still feel like they're part of the brush sign pen family, just with that little bit of stiffness, and it feels like they have a lot of durability as well. Okay, next up is the swatch test. So I'm gonna be swatching all of these colors. However, something that I've just noticed is it doesn't have the color name on the pen anywhere, which is a little bit frustrating. So I'm gonna to have to get all of these pens out and hope that they are in order of how they sit on the back. So I will still write the color number and the color name, just so if you did want to buy a specific color, then you know exactly which one it is. But that is a little bit frustrating that it doesn't have the reference on it. To be fair, the Pentel brush sign pen only has the reference on the barcode sticker. And I'm pretty lazy when it comes to this and never really peel them off. So yeah, that is a bit of a shame, especially as you can buy them individually. It'd be really good to know what color you already have. So if you're looking for another similar blue, you don't accidentally buy the same one. Okay, I've just seen the colours are definitely not in order here of what they are on the other side. Weirdly, black is 101 and then red is 102 um, rather than them going in number order. So what I'm going to do is get up on screen all of the different colours and hopefully I'll be able to match them up for you because I think that's the easiest way. Okay, so that is all of the colors. There is a really beautiful color range here. While I was doing the swatch test, I was trying to figure out whether the colors are the same as the standard Pentel brush sign pen. And I'm pretty sure there are some slight differences. Firstly, the standard ones, there are 24 colors in total and there are 30 colors here. And I think some of the names are a little bit different and the colors are slightly different as well. It'll be really interesting to do a comparison between the two pens in terms of a swatch test. So if that's something you'd like to see, then let me know in the comments below and I will do a swatch of all of the Pentel brush pens and we can see how they compare with each other. In terms of the range of colors, you can see we have a nice variety of different areas of colors. So we've got blues, greens, reds and pinks, oranges and yellows. So there's a really lovely mix. In terms of the greys, it's a bit strange that we have light grey, but it's actually quite dark. I would love it if there was a much lighter grey, like really, really light, because that really helps with like blending and shadows and things like that. I feel like both of these greys are quite dark. Overall, there aren't actually that many pastel colours. What I love about the Pentel Brush Sign Pen is they brought out a whole new pack of 12 colors and there's quite a few pastel colors in there which are so pretty 
and it's a shame to see that there aren't that many pastel colors here i did think this heliotrope hopefully i'm saying that right was going to be quite pastely because the pen looked it but it still come out quite vibrant in general though all the colors are super vibrant and they are really rich as well the colors are really consistent throughout the stroke it doesn't fade from dark to light too much and you can see where i've done the large scribble it looks really flawless and it's pretty opaque as well some of the colors aren't as opaque for example the pale orange and the emerald green but that's totally understandable because they are more pastely colors i absolutely love the turquoise color of course and the emerald green is really pretty too this pink color is beautiful. Weirdly, this is called magenta, this is called pink. I'd say that's more magenta in my head. This is a bit more purple or like a purpley pink. So I'm not sure about the names. I do quite like this idea of the beige and it's a shame that they didn't make some lighter colors. That would be really good for things like coloring in and shading. There are some colors that are really similar, like the dark green and the olive green are so, so similar and actually the standard green isn't that much different in shade range. And then the same for the coral pink and the orange. They're really similar too. I loved this dark red. I thought that was really pretty and a little bit unexpected. It's not really a colour that you see very often. I think in general, I would have taken out some of the darker colours and added in more pastel colours. It is a really nice colour palette overall though. And I definitely think there's a lot you could do with it. Whether you need to get the full 30 colours, I don't know. I haven't properly looked at the smaller packs, but it'll be interesting to see how the colours are split down for that. If you can get some of the base colours and they blend easily, then you may not need to get all 30. Talking about blending, let's move on to seeing how well they blend together. Okay, so blending is my absolute favorite thing to do with brush pens. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I really love bright colors and I love blending them together. The standard Pentel brush sign pens do blend really nicely. And actually I have a whole video on how you can blend those. So I will leave that in the description and put a clickable I button for you as well. But I'm really intrigued to see how these blend and also the colors are a little bit different. And obviously the nibs are are different as well. So we're going to start off with a really standard blending technique and that is coloring in a light nib with a darker nib. So I'm just taking this turquoise color and I'm coloring in the emerald green nib. Okay so let's see how this blends. So that is really subtle. It might just be that the colors aren't different enough. So let's take this dark blue. So this is the steel blue color. And give it another go. Oh yeah. So you can see that the blend happens quite quickly and then it comes off the nib quite quickly as well but that has blended really nicely actually. It's really subtle. You could always go in and add more color before you start doing your L here, for example. It just feels like a really lovely, subtle transition. So that works really nicely with the nib blending. I'm gonna see how it works with the small nib, but I think realistically, it's just not going to work because the nibs are too small. Okay, so that has worked a little bit. Because the nib is so small, the color comes out very quickly, but it's possible. I like it. Okay, let's see what it's like blending two very different colors. I'm going to use the same technique. This time I'm going to color in this blue. So this is the light blue, I believe, with the pink. Let's see how that comes out. Oh yeah, that is nice. So you can see some of the color has remained and I absolutely love that. Blue and pink blending is one of my favorites. Just want to see how it came out with the pink. So you can see that it looks really different depending what base color you go for. 
but you've got a nice little purple at the beginning of each one. Okay, really happy with that. Okay, next I want to try blending on paper. So for this, I am going to take my yellow. I'm just doing a few strokes and then I'm gonna do my red in a few strokes too. And we're just gonna go back in with that yellow. This might not be the best paper for it. Let's get an orange as well. Okay, so this paper's balling up a bit, so it's definitely not the right paper. The ink seems to be drying very quickly, which makes this method a lot harder. But it is working. I think with the right paper, that would look really nice. However, just by how quickly this ink is drying, I reckon it would work best if you were to blend with water. Let's just give it a go with the smaller tip. I'm just going to write hi. Keep it nice and simple. And then we're just going to go in with a little bit of red at the top. Grab the orange again. And then I'm just going to push back up with the yellow. That's worked really nicely actually. The paper has balled up a little bit and that's purely because I'm not using the right paper. Ideally you want to use something like a smooth watercolour paper or a Bristol board. So I've just got some Bristol board here and I'm just going to give that a go again. So we're just going to write A. And then I'm going to add a little bit of red just in the middle. It bleeds a little bit when you add an extra colour on. And then we're just going to go in with our orange just to help with the blending a little bit. So the ink does dry very quickly. There are pens like the Ecoline brush pen which is super juicy and that means that the ink doesn't dry as quickly and it makes this method a lot easier. So you can see that this ink is just too dry basically. That's totally fine, it means that it's very pigmented ink and it stays on the paper really nicely but you can just see where it's not blended so nicely around the red. I'm just going in with the orange. And actually where I've been building it up, it has bled a little bit. So in terms of blending, I would say that it works really well nib to nib if you're using the thicker end. And it actually works quite nicely blending directly on paper with a thinner tip, but with a thicker tip, the ink is just starting to build up a bit too much and you're losing a bit of definition. Because the ink dries so quickly, I'd really recommend if you are going to use these, then you use a little bit of water instead. Using a small paintbrush and some water always works really well with any water-based brush pen because of how the ink works. Here, I just wanna talk about the different areas that I've tested today and give my rating. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this from me. In terms of the container that the pens come in, they are very much clearly more for like shop purposes and just being able to like transport them once a customer's bought. I did like how the pens are staggered. I thought that was really nice. So for the outer packaging, I'm going to give this probably like a six out of 10. It's nothing special, but at the end of the day, it's not about the packaging really, is it? It's about the pen. In terms of the pen itself, I do wish that there were colours on the pens. If you don't plan on buying all the pens straight away and you just buy a few or you buy one of the smaller packs and then later on you want to get a few more, it might not be that obvious what pens you already have. So that is a little bit of a shame. So I'm going to give the actual pen itself probably like a seven and a half, eight out of 10. It was really nice to hold and I like the fact that the lids can clip on either end. It's so annoying when pens don't do that. Okay, so let's talk about the most important thing when it comes to these brush pens is how good they are for calligraphy. 
For the twin tip, I love the fact that the fine tip was different to the standard Pentel brush pen. It just gives another dimension of writing with a smaller brush tip. So I'm going to give this, I think I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 for calligraphy. Because it's got the small brush tip and the large brush tip, it's like two pens in one and it's perfect for beginners. The ink dried really quickly as well, so it'd be really good for left-handed people. I know that there are some pens out there like the Ecoline or the Karen brush marker that are super juicy, which is so nice, but for someone who's left-handed, it means that you're probably going to easily smudge it. So this pen is great for left-handed people, it's great for beginners. Okay, next up is the swatch test. I spoke about the swatch test a lot already. I am going to give this probably like an eight out of 10. It's really nice to see a wide range of colors, but I do feel like it was missing some pastel colors and there were a couple of colors that were already quite similar. So I do feel like there could be some room for improvement, but uh, I know Pentel brought out some more pastel colors in the original Pentel brush line pen. So never say never for these ones, I guess. Okay, so now on to blendability. I'd say that these probably won't be my go-to pen to do blending. Uh, so I'm going to give it about a seven out of 10 because it is possible to blend them, but there are definitely other pens that work a little bit nicer. But I think for me, the priority for this pen anyway is just being a really good calligraphy pen, especially for a beginner. And it's a super accessible because you've got the large and small tip. I think I'd love to do a full on blending video with these using water and see how that works. So let me know in the comments below if that's something you would love to see. So the final thing that I want to talk about before I wrap up this video is the price. So I paid £42.90 for this pack and that is 30 pens. So if we just do some quick maths. So that's coming out at about £1.43 per pen, which is so cheap when it comes to a brush pen. I'm aware that some people might not be able to splash out that much in one go on a set of pens. So they do do smaller packs, which I really love because that means that there's a really good price range. And then I think you can buy the individual pens for 3 dollars So that's obviously a much higher markup. But if you did just want to get one of these just to test out, you didn't want to break the bank, there is a really good budget range. So if you could only afford one pen or maybe you could afford 10 in a pack or 30, there's that possibility. So I'm going to give this a nine out of 10 for affordability. It is a shame that the pen by itself is a lot more expensive, but that is completely understandable. But it is still a much cheaper brush pen compared to other pens out there. I will leave a few different links below of a few different places that you can buy these pens and a few different pack sizes as well, just to see what works with your budget. Okay, so that is the end of this review video. I am so happy that Pentel brought out these brush pens. There are loads of different dual ended brush pens on the market, but most of them have a brush tip one end and a bullet point on the other. So the fact that they've brought out a pen that has a small brush tip and a large brush tip, it's just, it just makes me so happy. And this might overtake as my firm favorite brush pen. It might beat the Pentel brush sign pen original because it's so much more accessible for beginners if you do want to try out the large and the small tip you got both I hope you found this review video helpful if there's any other pens or art supplies that are coming out and you want to see what they're like then please let me know in the comments below because I love testing out new tools for you guys I have a little bit of addiction for buying new pens but it means that I can create videos like this and hopefully help you decide whether it's the right tool for you. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know in the comments which color Pentel Brush Sign Pen Twin Tip was your favorite. I think mine was probably the emerald green, which is no surprise. I mean, this is pretty much the same color. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye. I love you, I do. I really love you. These make me happy.